What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. Last time we came from the Forsaken Fortress, we learned that Ganon uh, was up to something pretty devious. He's uh, the king of the fortress over there. And uh, today we're going to be uh, on Windfall taking care of uh, a variety of stuff. Now, um, I, I also just wanted to point out real quick, if you guys are from the, uh, the shorts video and you guys are watching my Let's Play as I go along... Yeah, I'm sure you guys remember the video when uh, I was in the Forsaken Fortress and I threw the uh, the chair at the Moblin. I thought it was actually hilarious. And um, if you guys are from that short, welcome in. That short's got around like close to 9,000 views on it. So that's uh, that's pretty unbelievable. So thank you guys so much. You know, if, if you guys did find that funny and you guys are just now joining us for the playthrough, um, welcome on in. And uh, just wanted to say it's good to see you. Welcome to Miss Magius. I, uh, I, I am... Prime, I mainly do Pokemon stuff on here, and I, I am Mystic Umbreon, the, the Pokemon YouTuber. In case you guys do not know who I am, but, uh, this is my uh, gaming channel, basically, so, yeah. Anyways, though, there's a variety of stuff that we have to do here on Windfall Island today. First and foremost, though, I just want to show you guys the bomb shop. The bomb shop is one of my favorite places to go on the island. You guys will see just how much of a of a cheapskate this guy is, look. This guy wants to charge you 10,000 rupees for 10 bombs. Yeah. 10,000 rupees for 10 bombs. You're insane. It's funny because, like, the, the max rupee count in this game only goes up to 5,000. So, it's practically impossible to actually, like, buy these. Like, you legitimately like, cannot... Almost someone's like a cheating whiz and like somehow figured out how to uh, how to cheat, which by the way, cheating's based. Anyways, though, so, um, yeah, let's break some pots. We got ten rupees, and uh, I believe actually, if you talk to this guy, not now, but later on in the game, you can. Uh, I believe you can get him. Like, I think if you give him like some, I've only done this a few times. But I think if you if you give him like. Uh, He's got plenty of cash, apparently. I think if you uh, catch his pigs and you give him, like, some skull necklaces, he'll, he'll uh, help you out. Now, this guy right here, you got to feel really, really bad for him. You feel really, really bad for him. This poor guy got his daughter kidnapped. Yeah. Later on in the game, though, um, yeah, he's still a pretty cool guy. <laughs> and uh, this is Tot. Tot is uh, dancing in front of this uh, this monument right here. And he he's doing a dance, basically. Um, He's trying to change the daytime into nighttime. Dazzling magic dance. I think that might be a callback to Ocarina of Time, but I don't remember off the top of my head. I, uh, You know what? I'm actually going to give you guys an Ocarina of Time playthrough on this channel. Although I've never actually like fully beaten Ocarina of Time. Um, I always just got annoyed with the, uh, the, the lake temple. But I mean, I definitely would not mind trying it again. I mean, I mean, I, I did Twat Princess's Lake Bed Temple, and it was all right. But uh, with the Lake Temple, I need uh, to get. I mean, I've made it up to the Spirit Temple on Ocarina of Time before, but I've never fully beaten it. Like I played on stream like up to a certain point, and uh, if Shadow Finnick is watching this, uh, this dude has been begging me to do an Ocarina of Time stream for like the past three or four years. He's been like, "So you're finally gonna finish the game?" And I'm like, "Yes, yeah, Shadow. I might actually finish the game this time. If you're watching this, please comment." <laughs> You might be watching this. I don't know. But before we go any further, there is a very, very familiar NPC in here that you guys might know. He is one of my least favorite characters in this entire game and in and like in like the, the entire series. If I could just leave this guy trapped here for the rest of the game, I would. I despise Tingle. Yeah, I, I don't like Tingle at all. I don't like Tingle in this game. 
I don't like him in Oracle of Ages. I do not like him. I, I've never played Majora's Mask, so I, I really can't speak for him there. Um, and I do, I definitely do not like him in The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures for the GameCube. This guy makes me very, very angry. He is a complete cheapskate, mind you. And yeah, he kind of just bugs me. Um, you unfortunately can't use these. Back in the day, you used to be able to like send letters and stuff like that, and you could see like what other people were saying on um on like the Nintendo Wii U uh like network and stuff like that. I think the Wii U at this point in time is turned off. I think Nintendo finally shut it off like a little while ago. I don't remember like when they shut it off, but I'm pretty positive now that it shut off. So this feature is like pretty much useless. Do I want to come to your island? I mean, not really, but I mean, like, maybe later on in the game, we won't really have a choice. I, I really, really don't want to see your face again. But I, I uh, oh, he's, oh, is he saying, actually, you know what, Tingle? Never mind. Maybe I'm actually wrong about you. So Tingle, actually, if you're actually like a first time player, you can know yourself. Oh, yeah, that's great. But you know what game? Um... The features are turned off, so that this that doesn't count. But yeah, Tingle was not technically BSing. There is a, there is actually a very important item that is behind here. Hopefully, I can make it there on my first shot. I, I sometimes I can get this in one shot. Sometimes I forget. Sometimes in this in this playthrough, I do kind of get lost. I do have a general idea of like how to get there though because I have played this game a lot. And I say that now, but watch me actually like get lost in here. Uh oh, 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 yeah, that uh that was unfortunate. Rip. I went the wrong way. Okay, I'm back. Let's give this a second go. All right, come on. I got this. I can do it. I've done this before. Gosh darn it. I'm not going to fall for the same trick twice. Watch me actually fall for it again. <laughs> yeah, basically there is a special item that you can actually get back here. And it is, it's, it's pretty useful. And if you actually do want to complete the game... Uh, you have no choice but to go through here and get this box. Box? I'm sorry. Uh, a random item that I have no idea what it's about. Actually, yeah. It's a box. But not just any box. And I'm waiting for the timing of it. I think I got it. Yes, I did. I'm a professional. And actually, if you actually read, like, a lot of these stone monuments, you'll actually understand, like... But there was a guy in here that was a long time ago, and um, he buried this, uh, yep, the Picto Box. So this is, at last, I have succeeded in stealing the Picto Box. I have desired for so long, succeeded, yes. But sadly, due to a slight mistake on my part, I was also caught. I have been imprisoned, but I do not give in easily. I refuse to give this wondrous box to my captors. I've decided to hide it here in the depths of my cell and then make my escape by tunneling out. Yes, that's my plan. So Tingle basically uh, crawled back. Wait, so like, was Tingle the one who buried this? Do you maybe you guys might know in the comments? So of course, if I ever successfully escape from this prison, I shall one day return to recover the Picta Box. I'll write the controls for it in case I should forget them. Nintendo breaking the fourth wall. He loved to see it. And if obviously, if it wasn't made too clear to you, the item inside of this uh, of this box is in fact another box, but it's a Picto box. And it's basically uh, this game's equivalent of a camera, which um, if you press start, go to items, equip it with X, wrong button. <laughs> That's the Y button. I've been playing too much PlayStation or uh, Nintendo. Actually, no, yeah, I'm my Xbox controller, yeah. Um, y? Yep. So you can take pictures. It's a skull. Skulls are pretty cool. Except it's actually in black and white. So for right now, um, the photos are in black and white, but there is a way on how to make it colorful. 
And actually, if you go down here, uh, it's actually a shortcut back to King of the Red Lions. So we got the Picto box. And there is actually a um, someone in town who really likes pictographs. I will, I will show you guys him later. We're kind of just going to do a little bit of exploring and stuff like that. You know, talk to all the NPCs here. This is Tot. He's one of my favorite characters in, in, in this city. And see, like, it's really cool because, like, they tell you about, like, where you can go and stuff like that. It's, it's pretty nifty. So if you, like, look over there and stuff behind the bomb shop, you'll find out that you can actually climb on the roof. Gee. I will, uh, I will climb on the, the roof at, uh, at a later point in time in the game. We'll, uh, we'll save that for a little bit later. Windmaker HD, though, it just looks so beautiful and, like, breathtaking. I hope that they eventually bring this to the Switch. I know I say that in, like, almost every single episode, but, I mean, Windmaker just deserves to have more recognition about it. I would argue it's the best Zelda game in the entire series. If we're talking about Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild's really, really good, too. Don't get me wrong, but Windmaker just has a special, special, special place in my heart. Buzz, buzz. These guys are the killer bees. Yeah. 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 All these guys are basically going to like talk smack about you and stuff like that. These are kind of like the... These are basically like the equivalency of like the Little Rascals. If you guys have ever seen the movie The Little Rascals, it's, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. You talk to these guys, I always get reminded like of the Little Rascals because like they actually dress very, very similarly to like the Little Rascals as well. Also, um, this kid, also like this kid kind of reminds you like of Alfalfa because like his like little tooth, like little hair is like sticking up. <laughs> I'm Alfalfa. That's Spanky. Um, uh, and I don't know who the other two are. Okay. And the teacher of this town is, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll find out more about her. Yeah, I know how to throw chairs. YouTube Shorts Professional up in here. Talk to her again, and she'll ask you, like, you know, some stuff. I always, like, also thought, like, is that a wig on her head? Is, is, is that a hat? This lady, dude, like, like, she's... There's something about her that's just very interesting. I'll get more into that as we progress through the game. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so basically, she wants us to, like, talk some common sense into these kids. And, you know, kind of, like, get them to, like, settle down and, like, stop causing trouble, etc. Now, before I talk to the kids, though, there is something I do want to point out. If you listen to the game carefully you'll notice that it actually sounds a lot like Kakariko Village. Kakariko Village also kind of has this in Ocarina of Time. I'll actually play a um, Ocarina of Time track so you guys can actually hear the difference between the two. I'm sure some of you guys knew this, but just in case you guys, you, you guys didn't know, it's a pretty interesting, um, pretty interesting touch. So I believe that this city is basically kind of like the equivalency of like Ocarina of Time, but like 400 years later. I don't know how many years after um ocarina of time mistakes place i know i just know that it's centuries later which by the way thank you uh the person who clarified the timelines in the uh in the comment section that was pretty so that's pretty interesting pretty interesting information and i already i already kind of like knew some of this stuff but like, you actually like re-educated me on like some stuff too so it's cool thank you 
Now let's talk to, uh, well, I forgot what this kid's name was again. Ivan, yeah, that's right. Got spanky. And he calls her annoying hag too. Like, th th that's not very nice, Ivan. And he's like, yeah, like, do you think like we listen to, to a chump like you? I'll take you on. And basically what these guys do is they're going to challenge you to a game of hide and go seek. Your job is to find these kids on the island and um, by winning them, by, by beating them in a game of hide and seek, they'll actually like learn to respect you, which is actually kind of cool. And there's Tot. Tot. Tot's just a happy guy. He just likes walking around the island. Luckily, I've played Wind Waker a bunch of times, so I know where these kids are all hiding at. Alfalfa's hiding behind, uh, huh. he just looks so peaceful. Oh, right, no, 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 that's not Tot, my bad. Um, why, what, why did I call that guy Tot? No, 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 Tot. Tot's this guy. The guy in the 1970s disco outfit who can't seem to get out of the 70s, even though the 70s didn't technically exist here. I don't know what the rainbow is either. Is there like some is there, is there like some significance behind like this guy's attire? If you guys have the answer to that, let me know in, in the comments below. I'm sure like you guys probably have like some killer information that I don't even know about this game. Um, but yeah, now since we found him, now we actually have to chase him. Yeah, we got him. Let's go. Ivan thought he was slick by hiding up in the tree. Also, I like I like playing tag with that old man. I find it funny. Bye, buddy. I've already listened to your tale. He's sad. Poor guy. I wish you guys knew why I was letting that old man chase me around the tree. If you guys have played Windmaker, then you guys know exactly why. I just don't want to spoil it for anybody. Because some, because this might be uh, some of your guys' first time watching a Windmaker Let's Play. So I want to make it as spoiler friendly as uh, I possibly can. Like spoiler free. And I missed the jump. Now we have to go climb back up again. Oops, and then we do that. Link, jump up. Speedrunner tactic, baby. So actually, um, is, can can I jump across this? I'm pretty sure I can, if I roll and jump, I can make it. Okay, yeah, I was right. You don't have to sit all across. But yeah, this kid's actually hiding behind the bomb shop, which is actually kind of like a smart idea. He jumped off that cliff, though. Hope he doesn't do that all the time, because then that the dude's going to have some bad legs. We got some money too, which is even better here. 304 rupees. Can't really complain about that, can you? Oh no. Oh, well, we can actually get more than 300 rupees. I thought that the max rupee upgrade was five was 300. Is it 500 instead? We don't spread rumors. Uh, well, that's nice. But I didn't ask though, girls. Come on, buddy. Hey, man. Slow down. I can't catch you. Dude, schooling me. Yeah, I did that, you little rascal. Get it? Because it's the name of the movie. I'm so funny. And now, if you actually make it across here. And you go behind. Jump down here, and we're gonna catch this little kid if Link doesn't hit himself. I also have no idea like how Link can like r roll up these stairs like without getting like brain damage. Video game logic, everybody. What? How did that not work? What? Excuse me. Come back here. Okay, it worked. Wah! So he sounded like. Arg, matey. <laughs> And he gives you a heart piece. So this is definitely worth it. Now, 
Um, now we go talk to Miss Marie. And I forgot what I forgot what reward she gives the player. I don't know, I don't remember off the top of my head. We need to talk. Oh, she gave me some money. Oh, heck yeah, okay, that works. What is the, the max wallet upgrade in this game? Okay. And now, um, if you go outside again, the kids are basically going to tell you, uh, and he's basically going to say, like, it's Miss Marie's birthday. Joy pendants. Um, we actually have a joy pendant inside the spoils bag. Well, actually, no, I did. So, in my one playthrough of when I was at the Forsaken Fortress, one, okay, so, there was a playthrough earlier, but unfortunately, I, I told you guys I didn't, like, record the, uh, the game audio on, on accident. During that playthrough of the, the, the Forsaken Fortress, I actually, um, I found, uh, some joy pendants that Book Goblins had dropped. And this playthrough, with the volume actually on, I did not. So, in another, uh, dimension far, far away. I had jo uh, another joy pendant, but unfortunately, this one we don't. But that's okay, because we're gonna be able to get joy pendants like pretty fast, anyways. Later on, like actually very, very shortly. And basically, they're like, uh, "Yeah, I give the joy pendant to Mrs. Marie." So we're gonna go drop out that joy pendant with Mrs. Marie real fast. And hopefully she'll give us some kind of reward. Run up here. Go inside the place. And we will go in here, talk to Mrs. Marie. We need the talk. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, I forgot I need to equip this real quick. And uh, uh, R. I forgot that you can actually equip with R. That's actually nice. That That's like uh, the equivalent of Z on the GameCube controller. Which I have no idea why. Like, you couldn't use the, the GameCube controller on um, on the Wii U. Like, for, for Wind Waker. To be fair, like, it didn't really, like, come into play until uh, Smash 4 was released on the Wii U. Like, later on that year. I think, that, I think like, that's the sole reason why, like, they put the GameCube controller. Like, like they made, like, the GameCube adapter for the Wii U, like, in the first place. So... On the Switch, it's like, as long as you have the adapter, like, you can pretty much, like, use it, like, in any way you want to. Like, I use, um, the GameCube controller, like, whenever I, I play Mario Kart, I'm on my Switch. Look at these kids. You love to see it. I, I like these drawings. Also, like, there's a, um, like, a globe and stuff like that, too. Can't really tell because it's kind of like blurred out, but um. Maybe this is like uh, the world map on Zelda or whatever. Like, I, you really can't freaking tell anything though, unfortunately. I don't know. Maybe there's more to this world than, than we think there is. I mean, technically speaking, like, um, the world is actually like a very, very big place on the Great Sea because if you've ever played Phantom Hourglass and you guys know this game takes place after, uh, Phantom Hourglass takes place after Wind Waker. So, and I never played uh, Phantom Hourglass. I mean, I did. I just, I, I just could not stand. Um, I literally could not stand the temple. The Ocean Temple, I could not understand. I could not stand it. I could not understand it. You had to go through every single thing over and over and over again. It's it, it, it was it was tedious as fuck. I'm sorry. I I I could not like that's the like spirit like. It's a cool game. It really is, but after like I'm like I have to do all this again. You have to go all the way back and then you have to do the 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 the, the new one too. And I'm like I don't want to do that. If we could just teleport, like it, it, it's not even so much a. Phantom Hourglass was hard. It was just extremely, extremely tedious. And I'm like, I do not want to do this ever again. Like, I I, I hate it. I'm like, I remember like, I, I beat like a few of the dungeons and like, I'm there just like, I have to do this again for like the fourth time. I'm like, nope, I'm putting this game down. Could not stand it. <laughs> One of my least favorite Zelda games like in the entire series. Anyways, though, um, 
What do we have left to do? Okay, yeah, we still have to. We are going to go meet the the pick the pictographer, is what I like to call this guy. The pictographer. And he does not look like a very, very happy man. He just looks angry at life. Like he's looking at you just like. Ooh. You know, I wonder if the guy who got arrested for taking the pictograph, I wonder if he stole this from him. I'm like, I'm almost positive like he did, but. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be doing that randomly from, from, from here on out. I'm just going to be like throwing pots at people. If people don't like that, well, sorry. I don't know why. I, I just find it hilarious to, to just breaking people's stuff and throwing it at them. <laughs> it's always something in Wind Waker that I've always thought was actually hilarious that you can do. And this guy, as you can see, is like a real like professional pictographer. Like, look at all these beautiful pictures. He's He's really good. An amusing diversion. Hmm. Interesting, buddy. Very interesting indeed. And basically, like, if you go for, like, every single one of these, he'll explain, like, the, the variety of stuff um, that's, like, on the Great Sea. We can actually take a, look, a couple of those if you guys want. So this is the, uh, the Triangle Islands, Northern, Southern, and Eastern. Go here. If you are watching my Let's Play and are caught up, then you are then you know that this is the Forsaken Fortress, and it's it's actually pretty funny because this is like the exact shot that we had from Tetra's boat, like when they were doing like the little like cinematic shot. So it's pretty cool. And uh, I I have a uh, well, what did he say? Did did he say like the evil is like out of this world? Is that what he just said? I never really caught that. It feels as if evil that is not of this world. Wow. Definitely a reference to Ocarina of Time. That's very interesting. And these are choo-choos. Yeah, the, the blue choo-choo is definitely very interesting. That's a pretty nice pictograph. It definitely is. Yep. Someone owns a private cabana in the middle of nowhere. It's pretty cool. And for whatever reason, uh, the, the butler is on the door. Pretty strange. And, uh, oh god, this guy. And, uh, yeah, this is a place I never ever want to go. But, uh... <laughs> Andy! Oh, yeah! Hmm. I wonder what this place is. It's a fishing villages. Oh, yeah. Wait, hang on a second. What did he say? What did he say about a young lady? Oh my goodness. A beautiful young lass. I wonder if he is referring to Link's grandma, that is interesting. I never actually like took the time to actually look at some of these pictographs and see some of the, uh, the dialogue. You learn something new every day. And I, I like this because I'm going like more in depth and now we're getting like some pretty cool little lore about, uh, the game. It's pretty awesome. Got the ghost ship. Yeah. He died an unexpected death. Wow. Very interesting in the lore department. And you guys, as you guys can see, uh, there's some treasure chests back here. We'll, uh, we, we can come back to those later on in the game. But for right now, definitely not right now. Uh -uh. Anyway, though, we're going to go back downstairs. And, uh, oh, wow, would you look at that? A hidden entrance. Oh. I wonder. But basically, 
if you wait for him, he will, uh, I think, I believe he, yeah, he's, he's going to come down the stairs. I did not mean to do that. Wrong button. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Oh, oop, didn't mean to do that. My controls are just, I'm, I'm very, very mixed up because I'm used to playing on my PlayStation controller and on my Switch. Actually, the Switch is actually different. I'm used to playing on my Xbox controller and my PlayStation. So the Pro Controller on the Switch is actually very similar to the uh, to the Wii one. So, yeah. And yeah, we're going to do a side quest for this guy and become his assistant. Yes, absolutely. I definitely want to do it. And basically, he wants you to do all three. He wants you to get three pictographs of uh, people that live on the island. And... Um, yeah, the first one is uh, from a guy who is in kind of a love predicament. And this guy uh, loves pop culture and, and he loves uh, getting into everyone's secrets on the island. He's he's kind of a rumor spreader. And uh, this guy's Lenzo's kind of a dick. And yeah, his name is Lenzo. Pictograph Lens Lenzo. Funny, huh? And uh, we'll be paying this guy a little visit later on, too. I don't know who the heck this guy is, but, uh, yeah. Well, I do know who he is, but, uh, oh, gee, you guys don't. So, basically, what you want to do is... There's a certain NPC that will show up in front of this mailbox. And what you want to do is you want to wait for him to show up. Am I a little bit too close? And like, you want to make sure that you get like the proper angle and everything. So like, what you want to do is like, you want to wait right here. Kind of like move your camera around and such. The right stick is very, very sensitive. I think that's good enough. So what you want to do is you want to wait until um, a certain NPC shows up to the post box and he's about to drop a letter inside. I will go ahead and cut until we get that moment on camera. And here he is. He's finally showing up. Now, what you want to do is have your camera out. And right when he's about to put it in the box, you want to get it right there, right there, right there, right there. And what you want to do for extra embarrassment is you want to go up to him and show him that you caught him in the act. Yep, his future wife. Isn't it mean to embarrass people like that? Welcome to Zelda. <laughs> okay, so now uh, go back to Lenzo and Lenzo will give us uh, the second task that he has because I believe he has three for us. Caught him in the act. Oh. I'm like, I'm, I'm just like curious though. Like, how does this guy even like know like all this stuff? Like, did, did, does he just go around the town like stalking people? Also, these symbols on here. Oh my God. What are these symbols? That's super interesting. Oh my god, is that um kind of reminds me of like a boss in this game. Huh. And this guy is basically gonna be like, um he wants you to go find like the, the biggest coward in the entire town. 
And I know exactly where to go because I've done this about a million times. Well, I don't know, 30 or something. I don't know how many times I've beaten Windwicker, you guys. Also, if, if I missed anything on Windfall, we can obviously come back here later. So if I missed anything, like, don't hesitate to uh, tell me. But basically, um, you have to get this guy in the act real fast, right? So you roll into something, you put, you whip out the camera, and that should be it. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> That should be it. Go back down to Lenzo's place and talk to him again. If you guys hear any uh any background noise, I apologize. My family's vacuuming upstairs. Um okay, let's do this. Okay. Let's talk to Lenzo. Oh. -ho. I like how he goes, oh. -ho. Now, the third one, the third and final one. <laughs> so basically what you want to do now is uh, you want to find a couple in town that uh, are secretly in love with each other, but they won't tell each other how they feel. They kind of just look from afar. So now we're, we're going to want to do the same exact thing as we did with the uh, the first guy where we have to wait for a certain uh, NPC to show up. So I will cut once that NPC shows up. This guy is taking forever. Hurry up. Okay, never mind, there he is. <laughs> Gotti. Gotti. Okay, we got him. I feel so, I wonder how, how like Link feels about this from like a, from like just being l like a creep. Like this guy's basically like, yeah, like, I, I want you to go like stalk people across the town and take pictures of him doing like bizarre stuff. Like, I wonder like how Link actually like feels about this. I mean, I know he's like a kid, but like, d doesn't he have like any like social awareness like at all? It's like, why would I do this for like some, some, some creepy old man? It's like, I don't know. Yep, and he gives us the deluxe picto box, which actually allows us to take colored photos. And what's pretty neat about this is now since we have the colored picto box, now there are a couple of things that we can do across the town that actually opens up for us. One of these things is um, right here. If I, of course, like if, if I miss anything too, like let me know in, in the comments, you guys. So basically, if you take a picture of this girl right here, actually talk, talk to her real quick. She's uh yeah she she she's very vain, and um by uh by promoting her vainness, if you take a pictograph of her, give her a little bit bit of an ego trip. Talk to her again. She'll give you a, a reward. Treasure chart. Nice. Will I be doing all the treasure charts? I don't know. There is a possibility that I might, though. I don't know. I still haven't decided if I wanted to, like... Okay, now, like, as far as, like, taking pictures of, like, all the characters, like, the, the figurines, absolutely not. This guy, though, we will come back to a little bit later on in the game because it needs to be nighttime and there's no way for us to make it nighttime right now. So we will come back here later. Um, geez, as far as like other things that we can do, uh, I think if we... I think this character's name is Sue Bell. 
I could be wrong. I, no, we we don't want her to be link to be blinking like that. Okay. And we talked to her. She's like, I like my outfit. And um, we're I unfortunately I I'm guilty of breaking this girl's pots on her head. And um, basically, if uh, I think if you talk to her again, she'll basically be like, can you take a pictograph of me? And uh, where is the where is our, our good looking red haired guy? Uh, he's a rat. He's walking around here somewhere. But if you talk to him again, he'll um, basically be like, yeah, guy, like uh, there's this really cute girl I like. And then you uh, you take a picture with him and stuff like that. And he'll uh, he'll be happy and excited. There he is. Here's our friend. Okay. Because I, I, I've done this a lot, but I don't actually know how to like trigger this. Okay. I don't. Maybe if I go in and out. Oh, actually, uh, I forgot. We still need to do a uh, splish kaboom. Splish kaboom is very, very. Uh, it, it it can be fun. Um, but before we do this, I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna see if I can go outside and talk to her again, and maybe that'll trigger the uh the, the side of quest. But I'm not sure. Um, now, if, if you talk to him again, will he, uh, where is he? I do not remember off the top of my head. There he is. Okay. Okay, um, maybe I have to come back here after another point in the game and then it'll activate for us. Yeah, I heard you the first time. Yeah, you like to walk. whoop de doo Okay. There's a few more things we can do before we head off to the next location. Talk to this guy. This guy looks like he absolutely loves his job. And he makes some very, very bizarre sound effects. At least he's into his job, you know what I mean? At least he's into his job, like, to a certain extent, alright? He must get paid pretty good for him to do this. Basically, what you have to do... Welcome to Splish Kaboom. Your, ba your job is to, it, it's basically battleship. You have cannons, you take down all the squid. You have to hit, um, I believe, you have to um, beat the high score. And you have to um, actually win the game. If you win the game, I believe the prize is a heart piece. I'm almost positive it's a heart piece. It might take me a few times to do this, so bear with me. If we don't do it right, the uh, the, the first time, I'll just cut until we eventually get it. There we go. There's another one. Okay, now we got three more. Oh. Oh, so close. All right, I'll cut until I get it. Yay, we got it. We didn't meet the high score, though, unfortunately. But that's one. And we got a heart piece. But if we beat it again for a second time and we, um, we get a treasure chart actually. So I'm going to beat it one more time until we beat the highest score. And I'll see you guys back when I beat it again. Oh, 
Oh, never mind. Um, I, I guess we're good. I didn't beat the high score, but... I think this is all I can get. Like, do I get anything else from being the highest score? I don't know. This time I beat it under 20. Let's see what we get. Oh, okay, never mind. I thought that it maybe, or am I gonna get something from, oh yeah, the new new record. Uh, did we get a treasure chart too? We did. Okay, good. So I've done everything that I can for uh, this uh, this little mini game. And um, as you guys can see, uh, money. Our money went down a little bit, but uh, I actually have a little trick that I'm sure you guys probably know about. I forgot to show this off, by the way. If you go behind the uh, the boat, which is actually a direct representation of how Tetra's boat looks, there are three yellow rupees back here. A yellow rupee is 10 rupees. So you technically have, if you like, if say, for example, like you're broke, you have three tries with these, uh, three, uh, with these 30 rupees that you get behind this boat. So little, little pro tip. Anyway, I think that's pretty much all we can do for right now on, um, on windfall. If you guys, um, want to did anything change here? I don't think, I really don't think anything changed here to be honest. Um, what I'll do now is we shall talk to this gentleman right here and he, um, he has a little story for us from a land far away, the blizzards blow. So it just goes to show you that this is not the only place. Yeah, they're kind of foreshadowing for a future game. It's pretty cool. Eighty rupees. Yep, you give him eighty rupees, he will give you the item that we only technically needed, which is the boat. Now, with that said, I think this is all we can do for right now, though, you guys. Um, yeah. Actually, there's one more thing I want to show off real quick. <laughs> one more thing I want to show off. And then we can call it a day. Hold on a second. I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, I love this part. This part is one of my favorite parts of, of going on Windfall. What you want to do is, is you want to go up these stairs. And if you talk to this gentleman over here, he is very upset about something. I wonder why. Also, these pictures are very, very awesome, by the way. Has some pretty good pictographs of windfall on the wall. There's a crab. That looks like outset. Or maybe somewhere else. That's another windfall. That's a beautiful night sky. Or that it could be like a constellation or something. I don't know. I'm just trying to look at all of these. Uh, ooh, I wonder what that is. That's a place we haven't been to yet. I wonder where that's at. Interesting. That's a cool shot of windfall. The flowers are really pretty. Yeah, very cool stuff. Mm. And he's basically like, can you rescue my daughter from the Forsaken Fortress? Which in case you guys didn't know, um, Maggie and Mila are the daughters of these two men on um, on Windfall Island. So the uh, the yellow haired girl in there that we saw, that's Mila. That's this guy's daughter. And Maggie is uh, the other, the old man's daughter. So pretty interesting. The auction house. We will. That's very, very important. Okay, now there was actually a trick I wanted to show you guys to get some fast money. I, I think maybe if I leave here and come back, maybe it'll activate. Either that or maybe maybe it was only in, uh, in, on GameCube Boardmaker. I could be wrong, though. We'll see what happens. Let's see real quick. Let us see real fast. What do you got? Oh, okay. Okay. 
Oh, actually, so there's the rupee inside here. I believe this is like 10 rupees, right? 20 rupees is actually cool. But, um... We're gonna have a little bit of fun, by the way. Call it just uh, me just being a little naughty. He's like, do you think you can just break someone's vases and leave without paying for them? Guess what, buddy? Psych! And uh, we magically appeared to King of the Red Lions. I didn't break any vases. Did you guys break any vases? I, I didn't see anything that, that, that went on at all. Nope. And he's basically teaching you like how to sail. Um, simply the Wii U gamepad. Now we're using the uh, the Pro Controller, buddy. And with that said, though, I think this is actually a good time to uh, end off the episode here. So with that said, I will see you guys in the next one. So back King of the Red Lines. Bye.